everybody. This is Youth Pastor Carrie Royal from Kingdom Faith Global Ministries, and we are here for Story Time with Pastor Carrie. Yay! How have you been? I have missed you so much this week. I couldn't wait for Story Time. And everyone's welcome because everyone is always welcome in the kingdom. So welcome to our kingdom castle where we're going to have story time and we're going to see another great kingdom adventure. Yes. So how have you been? Oh, I've been great too, praising God all week long and waiting for our story time. Do you remember last week we talked about Samson and Delilah? You remember who Samson was? Yes, he was one of the great judges of Israel, and God blessed him with great strength, which he used to deliver his people from the Philistines. Yes, and Delilah, she tricked him into telling him where his strength came from. He was not supposed to ever cut his hair. And when he told her that that's where his strength came from, she cut off all his hair. And then the Philistines captured him and took him as a slave. You can't trust everybody. But what you always need to remember is you can trust God. So when God gives you instructions, you need to make sure that you follow them. All right? Now, after he was captured and became their slave, what happened? Do you remember? Yes, yes. God allowed his hair to grow back and he favored him and let his strength come back as well. And he allowed him to destroy the Philistines one more time. And he killed even more Philistines with his death than he had ever killed in life. Wasn't that great? Yay! That was great. God is a good God and he knows that sometimes we make mistakes. So he does forgive us. But when you learn a lesson, don't keep falling for the same thing like Samson did. Every time he told Delilah what the problem, how he got his strength, she kept doing it. So don't keep falling for the same things. Learn from your mistakes and do better the next time around. Today, we're going to go see a new great, great kingdom adventure. Yes, we are. And welcome to all my newcomers. How are you today? Yes, yeah, so let's fill you in on how we get there because we fly. We always fly with our invisible wings. All you have to do is open the book. Open the book and you can soar to new great kingdom adventures every time you open the book. Yes, read your Bible and you can go see great adventures every time. Today, we're going to go see Ruth. Yes, Ruth was a very loyal woman. We're going to hear her story and what happened with her. Are you ready? Yay! Yes! I am ready to! Yay! I am ready to! All right, so here we go. Everybody get set, put on those wings, and let's fly! It was very unfortunate times. So they decided to take their two sons and move to Moab. Elimelech, 
storm's coming, Naomi. I'm going out to the fields. Huh? I need your help. Quickly. Now. You must save the grave. I've got it. Hold the stake mm. straight. Mm. All right, hurry, hurry. Mm. Ah. Hold on. No. The wind, father. Oh. 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 Gone. It's all gone. Easy, boy, easy. I hate to see you leave, Elimelech. Perhaps we'll return when this famine is over. Listen, we never knew each other very well, but we are related. I want to help. No. But thank you. Look, somehow I... I've done well during the famine. I appreciate your kind offer, Boaz. But I've never taken a hand out. And I don't intend to start now. Godspeed, Elimelech. Who was that? Boaz. A kinsman of mine. Just wanted to say goodbye. Now, when they got to Moab, shortly after Elimelech died, and Naomi was very sad. That was a sad time for them. She had to go without her husband, but she still had her two sons. And they married two Moabite women. Their names were Orpah and Ruth. And they loved Naomi and their husbands very much. But 10 years later, her sons died as well. Oh no! <sighs> Naomi felt very sad. She was distressed. She didn't know what to do. She not only lost her husband, but she lost her sons as well. But as I said, her two daughter-in-laws loved her very much. So when she decided to go back to Bethlehem, they decided to go with her. She told them, however, do not come with me. Go back to your families because I can't have any more sons and I don't have any more sons for you to marry. You need to go back to your families where there's a chance for you to have a good life. See, not only did they care for her, but she cared for them as well, and she did not want them to suffer. She felt like the rest of her days would be filled with sorrow, and she did not want the same thing for them. So Orpah left, but Ruth was determined not to leave Naomi's side. She was very loyal to her. She told Naomi, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die. Wasn't that great? Yay! Yay! So, after Naomi saw that she was not going to turn back, she allowed her to come with her. And Naomi was not alone. I've decided to return to Bethlehem. And I want you to go back to your families. What? No, mother. Please, do it for me. We've always obeyed your wishes, but we can't let you live alone. Bethlehem is no place for two Moabite women. My people will not accept you. You'll be strangers there. As you were a stranger here. Don't you understand? It's my fault that you've been hurt. The Lord has punished me. That's not true. Your God is good. You are good. If you love me, you'll do as I have asked. Go, return to your own people.
don't ask me to leave you. For where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. And where you die, I will die. For your people are my people. And your God is my God. I love you. Everything this woman has is here. She has nothing else. I will do my best to get her a good price. Uh, what? There's my cousin Jabesh. That's no surprise. Excuse me, can we start the auction? Some of us have work to do. Very well. When a man dies... Oh, not another lecture on the law. And leaves behind a woman such as this. The brother of the dead man should marry her and care for her. Such are the commandments of God. In Bethlehem, when there is a widow, the closest kinsman Excuse is supposed me. to marry her and take care of her. This woman has no kinsman, and now she is left with nothing. She comes before you now to sell all that she owns. Please, be as generous as possible. First up for sale is this poor widow's land. Ten thousand shekels. Brother Jabesh, that is very generous indeed. I like to help where I can. What he'd like is to buy up Bethlehem and put everyone else out of business. Very well. Ten thousand shekels going once. I think I'll have a little fun. Ten thousand shekels going twice. And... Twelve thousand shekels. Huh? Twelve thousand shekels. Uh, going once. Twelve thousand shekels going twice. Twelve thousand. And five shekels. Fourteen thousand shekels. <laughs> Careful. Don't worry. I know my cousin's greed all too well. He won't let that land slip away. Fourteen thousand. And three shekels. Eighteen thousand shekels. <laughs> Master, you can't afford it. I know that. But he doesn't. All right. You've got yourself into a pickle now, cousin Boaz. And I, for one, want to see how you get yourself out of it. Eighteen thousand shekels going once. Uh, eighteen thousand shekels going twice. And eighteen thousand going... Eighteen thousand and one. <laughs> Boaz? Ah, cousin Jabesh. Your charity has no end. Oh! The house looks like it's been abandoned. And yet no one lived there for all the time that they were in Moab. So it sort of was abandoned. But... Naomi, even though she's old, she has Ruth there to help her, to take care of the place. And Ruth was very good and very loyal, and she went out and she worked and she cleaned, and she did whatever she could to help Naomi. She was very good to her. And when you're good to people, God will allow those blessings to flow into your life. See, Ruth didn't go chasing after blessings. She just did what she thought was right, and God allowed the blessings to chase after her.
Good morning. You're up early. Wow! It looks great! Oh, she did a really thank good job! Thank you for job. letting me come with you. Oh, Ruth, you are so good. Where are you going? To find some food. Stay and rest. I'll be back. Oh, Lord, please bless her. If there's any way to save her from this poverty, do it, Lord. Ruth went out to work in Boaz's field, a kinsman of Elimelech. She did not know she was going to a kinsman's field, but that's where God led her. And when Boaz saw her, he said, who is this woman? And they told him the whole story. Boaz was very grateful for the loyalty and love that Ruth had shown to Naomi. And because of that, he showed the same loyalty to her and told her, don't go anywhere. Stay here and work in this field. And we'll make sure that you have everything you need. My men will watch over you and nothing will happen to you. So they watched over her. He even had the men drop grain that she was able to pick up and she had so much at the end of the day and Naomi was wondering how she got it all Daniel. and that's when she oh. told her the whole sure. story wasn't that something hello uh I wanted to tell you that uh well that you're welcome here. Thank you, sir. When you drink a need, I, I mean, um, when you need a drink, uh, go to the well. My men will draw it for you. I am a Moabite. They may not want to. Well, that doesn't matter. I, I've ordered them to treat you kindly. Well, uh, welcome. My servants told me how you, how you gave up your home and your own people for the sake of your mother-in-law. I think that's very kind. May God bless you for it. Thank you. This woman has uh, special needs. Let some extra grain fall for her. Better yet, tell her she can just harvest some of her own. No, no you cut some down and bundle it up for her. And if anyone mistreats her, they'll have me to deal with. Tell the men that. You never know the blessings God has in store for you when you do right. All of this in one day. The man who owned the field was very kind. He let me take all that I wanted. And then he invited me to eat with him. I think the others were very surprised. Who was it? What was his name? Boaz. Boaz? You know him? Ruth, darling. He is my nearest kinsman. Oh. Then, then he must marry you. <laughs> no, not me. He must marry you. Me? He's your nearest kinsman, too. Well, what are you waiting for? Go tell him. Tell him that he's the nearest kinsman. But I don't want to force him to marry me. Ruth, it's his duty. So because Naomi told Ruth he was a kinsman, that means he was the closest to her and he would be able to marry her. But she didn't know there was a closer kinsman. So let's see what happens. Master Boaz? Y yes, Ruth? Uh, um, <laughs> nice day, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. What could he ever see in me? 
him with his land and fine clothes, and me, a Moabite with nothing. When he looks at me, I'm sure he sees nothing but a child. But I did promise Naomi. She's done so much for me. I'll tell him. I'll tell him he's my near kinsman. I will. Oh, good night. Did you tell him? It, uh, it didn't come up. Ruth, darling, you have to bring it up. Oh, I know. I don't see why I have to talk to him tonight. Because it's your last chance. The harvest is through and the gleaning is done. When would you see him again? But the harvest party is for the workers. All you have to do is get his attention. If you won't do it for yourself, then do it for me. Tower, where are you going? I'll be right back. Eat up. There's plenty more food. Uh, Boaz? Ruth. Oh, I'm sorry to come here like this. Please don't think evil of me. No. No, it, it, it's all right. I... I came to tell you, or, or to ask you, 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 you are a near kinsman to me. I'm a, what? Oh, uh, a near kinsman to me. You know what that means? Uh, yes. Do... do you? Y yes Will you? Will I? Will you? Yes. She told oh, him! She told him! Well, what's wrong? Yes! She told there is him! There a kinsman than I. It's my cousin, Jabesh. But I don't think he... Unless... Unless you have anything of worth. I'm worthless. No. You're priceless. Boaz, where are you? Tomorrow morning. It's urgent, Joshua, please. It isn't easy to call the elders together, Boaz. Now, if you could tell me what all this is about. I'm getting married. I mean, I think I am. You're not sure? No, I... I want to marry Ruth, but Jabesh is the nearest kinsman. I think you may have a problem. Uh, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, gave this to me before he left Bethlehem. It's the deed to a plot of land. A huge plot of land. If he wants it... Everything belongs to Jabesh. Oh no! Boaz is not the closest kinsman after all! Well, Boaz is a really good man. And he knows that he must do what's right. And the right thing for him to do is to let the closest kinsman know. That way, he can decide for himself if he wants to marry Ruth and receive the land, or if he doesn't. So, let's just see what the closest kinsman says, because there's still a chance. And remember, God is in control. Oh, I'm happy to help the poor widow out. How much? Well, then you want the land. Because if you don't, I'm willing to buy it. Oh, because if you don't, I'm willing to buy it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Boaz, old cousin. It's mine. You do understand. You're the nearest kinsman. If you accept the land, you must take everything that comes with it. <laughs> Bring it on! Bring it on! I can afford it all. Congratulations, cousin Jabesh. 
This is your new wife. My new what? Your wife. She's a widow, but you're the nearest kinsman. Oh, you'll also have Naomi as a mother-in-law. Mother in what? They'll both be needing some new clothes, of course. Oh, and they'll need separate rooms. I guess you'll have to buy a larger house. A larger house? Oh, don't worry. Give Ruth a few thousand shekels and she'll have it decorated in no time. A few th... <laughs> this is an outrage. I'm not even married and I'm already broke. Wait until you have six or seven children. That's the expensive part. Cousin Boaz, help me. I can't afford a family. I have my money to think about. <gasps> you take her. Done. Boaz is going to get to marry Ruth. Yay! So Bo you can see Boaz was very sincere. I'm glad they're going to get to marry because I think he's going to be a lot better for her than the other kinsmen. The other kinsmen decided not to marry Ruth. So because he decided not to marry Ruth, now Boaz has the opportunity to marry her. And they're going to live happily ever after. Yes, and they did marry and live happily ever after. And Ruth had a son named Obed. Obed was going to grow up to be in the lineage of King David. Yes, so Obed had a son and his name was Jesse. And Jesse had a son, and his name was David. And David wound up being king. So God allowed Ruth, because of her loyalty to Naomi, to be in the lineage of a great king. Wasn't that great? Yay! So you never know what God has in store for you. Just do right. The easy way out is not always the best answer. She could have went back to her family and chose the easy way, not knowing what was lying ahead for her in Bethlehem. But she chose to be loyal and do right for Naomi. And God looked out for her. And when she said, your God will be my God, she made a decision to serve God, the Lord God Almighty. And God was very pleased with her. And we need to make the same decision. Choose to serve God. Do what he wants you to do and allow him to bless you. Let him be your God as well. All right, thank you for tuning in today. Be blessed, everyone. I love you. And always remember that God is in control. No matter what the situation, he is in control. And he wants to bless your life.